Hi and welcome to this chapter on DynamoDB. In this chapter, we're going to look at tables and items. So in a DynamoDB table, an item is a collection of attributes. Items are like rows in a traditional database. An attribute is a combination of a name and a value. This is somewhat like the column of a traditional database. So if you look at the picture down below, I have a DynamoDB table which has two attributes. One is the ID and the other is the name. The table has two items. The first item has a value of 2 for the ID and the value of mark for the name and the other item has a value of 1 for the ID and a value of John for the name. Next just like the databases in Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server, you can also define primary keys. In the case of DynamoDB, it's known as the partition key. So if you define a table with the partition key, you need to note that each value needs to be unique. It's the same concept as a primary key. But you also have the facility to define composite keys. You can define a composite key by defining an additional key known as the sort key. So when you define a sort key, you can then have duplicate values for the partition key and that's shown in the table above. So in the table, the ID is defined as a partition key and the name is defined as a sort key. And that's why we can have duplicate values for the ID. The sorting is done via the name for each value in the ID column. So for each partition key, the sorting key is done via the sort key. Next, we just go on to the best practices for defining the partition key. The reason I have this is because this is asked as a question in the AWS developer exam. I've taken the snapshot directly from the AWS documentation. It's pretty simple. If you have an attribute which will have multiple values, then it's a best practice to define this as a partition key. So they've given an example of a user ID. Uh, where an application will have multiple users and because you have many users defined for the application system you will have multiple user IDs and hence it's a good practice to define this as the partition key. But if you have an attribute such as a status code or even an error code which just has a very small subset of values then it's not a good idea to define this as a partition key. So now we've got the basics covered let's now go on to the AWS console Let's create a Dynamo TV table and let's see how to work with items in a table in the AWS console. So now here we are in the AWS console. Now, if you wanted to start using Dynamo DB, I have it as an option because I've recently visited that service, but you could go down and scroll to the database section and you will see Dynamo DB right over here. So let's click on it. Now, since I don't have a table already defined, let me click on create table. One quick to note is, as always, note the region you are in when you are creating a service. So currently I'm in the Singapore region. Let me click on create table. Now let me give a name of the table as a person. Now as I said, we can define two keys. We can define the partition key or and we can define the sort key. So this basically makes up your composite key. But for now, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to define a partition key and uh, this will be the key name of, uh, we'll give a name of the attribute as ID and uh, we'll give it a data type of number. And for now, let's keep the default settings. Uh, I'll dwell into these settings in a topic later on, but for now, I just want to keep it simple and let's click on the create button to have the table created. So this takes a couple of minutes for the table creation. It's pretty fast. Let's quickly we just wait till the table is created. So here we are, the table creation is done. Now let's go on and create some items in the table. So we can just quickly go on to the items tab and uh, you can see that we have the ID that's our partition key already defined. Let's click on create item. Uh, let's give a value of one. Now, if you want to add uh, another attribute after this, you can click on the plus button. Uh, and you can click on a pen. You can decide on the data type. So let's choose string for now. And let's give it um, the attribute has name. And let's give a value of John. Now for those who are familiar with JSON, you can also quickly flip this through the text option and you can actually enter JSON format as it is. But for those who are not familiar with JSON, you can go back to the tree option and add your items as it is over here. So let's click on save. So now we've got one item in the table. If you want, we can create another item. Let's give a value of two. Let's append a string of name again. 
let's give a value of mark. Uh, and since this is a NoSQL database, you can actually append another string. So just putting an attribute name of country and the value is US and click on save. So now you can see that you have items which perform to different schemas. You don't need to have a predefined schema and you don't need to have the country, you know, value defined for the first item. So now we've seen the creation of items. If we go to any item, we can actually duplicate the item. But I hope you know what's going to happen when I do this. So if I click on the save button, obviously it will return an error because we've only defined the partition key and this needs to be unique. We can easily go on and edit an item. So you can change it and just click on the save button. It's that easy. Uh, and if you want, you can delete the item and you can export to CSV. So when you export to CSV and you open it in Excel, you'll get all the fields as it is over here. I've only chosen one field. So I think I, I just chose one. That's why I just basically gave uh, only one item in the export Excel, but I can choose both and I can again say export to CSV. And this time around, I'll get both the items in the Excel sheet. So this was just a quick roundup of um, how you can actually create a table and add items to the table. So let's now move on to the next chapter in DynamoDB.